Something strange has been discovered beyond Pluto's orbit and it's getting closer. A planet that could be as big as Earth is coming back into our solar system after thousands of years. At least that's what US researcher Mike Brown claims, as he has found evidence of the existence of the ninth planet in a remote region of the solar system. This planet could be in an orbit that takes it beyond the boundaries of the solar system for thousands of years until it returns. The question of whether we have a Planet 9 in the solar system has occupied researchers for decades. One of them has now succeeded in proving it. Mike Brown, professor of planetary astronomy at the California Institute of Technology, and his colleague, Constantine Batigan, were already researching the strange objects hiding in the Kuiper Belt. And the two scientists noticed strange things. Dwarf planets in the Kuiper Belt show exactly the same orbital anomalies that have already led to the discovery of other planets such as Neptune and Pluto. Mike Brown is also known in specialist circles as the Pluto Killer. Brown was instrumental in the decision to classify Pluto as a dwarf planet from 2006 and thus remove it from the list of official planets. Since then, Pluto has strictly speaking only been a trans-Neptunian object. This means that the position of Planet 9 has been vacant for almost 20 years. However, the myths and legends surrounding another planet go back much further. There have always been rumors about a Planet 10, a Planet X, or a strange world that only appears every few thousand years. Now, we have reached a breakthrough, and if Mike Brown is right, Planet 9 is coming our way right now. Brown and Batigan provide evidence. The Planet 9 hypothesis received another extreme boost in 2016 when researchers Brown and Batigan investigated the unusual orbits of six trans-Neptunian objects. Trans-Neptunian objects, or TNOs for short, are a group of objects that lie beyond the orbit of Neptune, and these TNOs show a kind of agglomeration in their orbits that indicates the existence of a massive body. Due to its gravity, this object pushes a kind of hollow into the orbits of the small TNOs and their orbits subsequently converge in a striking way. The object could be a ninth, larger planet. Brown and Batigan spent years working with detailed mathematical models and meticulously collected all available data on the TNOs and their peculiarities. Extensive computer simulations then showed that the body they were looking for, if it is a planet, is around 10 times as massive as the Earth and would have to orbit the Sun in a highly elliptical orbit. This orbit would be between 400 and 800 astronomical units away from the Sun, which explains why the planet has not yet been observed directly. One orbit around the Sun may take this planet up to 20,000 years, and its highly elliptical orbit takes it far beyond the boundaries of the solar system. This meant that it was simply not visible to earlier generations of researchers and astronomers. The old astronomers could only see as far as Saturn with their simpler telescopes. Uranus only became visible in 1781 thanks to better telescopes, and Neptune only came into our field of vision in 1846. What lies behind Neptune was a myth for as long as the existence of another mysterious planet in our solar system. Today, we know that the Kuiper Belt begins behind Neptune, a zone that is around 3 billion kilometers wide and is home to more than 100,000 individual objects. These regions of the solar system are already so far away from the Sun that there is hardly any light left. Even with today's telescopes, scientists find it difficult to observe small planets or other bizarre objects such as Arakoth. Due to its extremely large distance from the Sun over thousands of years, the ninth planet would be very faint and difficult to see even with current telescopes. Brown and Batigan have therefore so far relied on indirect evidence and have already succeeded in mathematically proving the existence of Planet 9. Now the scientists are pinning all their hopes on a new telescope which is due to start work in a few years' time. Will the Vera C. Rubin Observatory find Planet 9? The existence of Planet 9 has already been proven mathematically. Now we have to find out exactly where this planet is hidden. A telescope should be able to do this. The new Vera C. Rubin Observatory is currently being built in the Chilean Andes. With its ingenious new technology, 
This telescope will scan the night sky in record time, and this could put an end to the search for Planet 9. With its 8.4-meter telescope and lightning-fast, large-scale sky scans, this telescope will no longer miss even very dark objects in our solar system. The initial plan is for the Vera C. Rubin telescope to track the movements and patterns of the TNOs more and more precisely until the areas where Planet 9 is currently located are identified with certainty. Brown and Batigan have already clearly narrowed down the areas and hopes are high that the final proof will be provided in just a few years. The Search for More and More New Planets Can you imagine that there are even more planets in our solar system that we didn't know about until now? We are getting better and better at looking at the edges of our solar system and finding stranger and stranger things there. Just 100 years ago, nobody would have thought that there were dozens or possibly even hundreds of dwarf planets in the Kuiper Belt. Time and again, it was orbital anomalies of known planets, such as those observed by Brown and his team in the TNOs, that led scientists to believe that there must be other planets in the system. In the mid-19th century, Urban Leverrier and John Couch Adams worked in a very similar way to Brown and Batigan today. In the mid-19th century, Astronomers noticed that Uranus was deviating from its predicted orbit, suggesting that it was being acted upon by an unknown mass. Urban Le Verrier was a French mathematician and astronomer and a pioneer of Uranus research. He began to investigate the anomalies in detail from 1845 and, through complex calculations using Newton's theory of gravitation, came to the conclusion that another planet existed. Around the same time, the English mathematician and astronomer John Couch Adams came to the conclusion of the existence of another planet independently of Le Verrier. He also recognized the existence of the planet in the orbital anomalies of the planet Uranus. Finally, Le Verrier succeeded in making an almost exact mathematical prediction of the position of this unknown planet, and shortly afterwards the German astronomer Johann Gottfried Galley was able to see Neptune very close to the position predicted by Le Verrier. This discovery was a triumphant demonstration of the power of mathematical astronomy and is often used today as motivation to continue the search for Planet 9. A few decades later, a man named Percival Lowell was intrigued by the possibility of another planet beyond Neptune. He named this planet Planet X. Lowell's hypothesis was again based on irregularities in the orbits of Uranus, and in addition, Neptune also showed matching anomalies. Lowell was convinced that the gravitational influence of an unknown planet was responsible, and he searched for Planet X for the rest of his life. Although he himself did not discover the planet, his work laid the foundation for the discovery of Pluto. The young astronomer Clyde Tombaugh joined the observatory founded by Lowell in 1929 and had the success of his life in 1930. Tombaugh used a method of photographic sky surveys in which he photographed the night sky and examined the images for changes. On February 18, 1930, he discovered a moving object on two photographic plates taken six days apart. Shortly afterwards, it was clear, we have a planet X, and today we know this object as Pluto. The discovery of Pluto was another stroke of genius in astronomy, and now, another 100 years later, some researchers are once again searching for a planet that no one has ever seen before, but whose effects astronomers can perceive. The example of Vulcan, a hypothetical planet from the 19th century, shows that this type of astronomy does not always lead to success. In the 19th century, astronomers noticed an anomaly in the orbit of the planet Mercury. The exact position of Mercury deviated slightly from the predictions made on Newton's theory of gravity. Again, it was Urban Le Verrier who suspected that an unknown planet between Mercury and the Sun could be responsible for these orbital anomalies. He called this hypothetical planet Vulcan. Many astronomers then searched for Vulcan, and some even claimed to have observed it. Despite many reports from all over the world, Vulcan could never be definitively proven. The anomalies in Mercury's orbit remained an unsolved mystery for a long time until Albert Einstein published his general theory of relativity in 1915. Einstein's theory describes how massive objects bend space-time, which affects the movement of planets. 
Einstein showed that the gravitational effect of the Sun, which is particularly strong in the vicinity of Mercury, bends space-time to such an extent that it can explain the observed deviations in Mercury's orbit. Thus, in this case, no additional planet was necessary to explain the anomalies. Are the KBOs Planet 9? Are you already looking forward to the day when Planet 9 will be confirmed and to the first photos? Well, this triumph is not so certain yet, because some researchers have shown that the orbital anomalies can also be explained in another way. KBOs, or Kuiper Belt Objects, are a specific subcategory of TNOs and are located in the Kuiper Belt, a ring-shaped region that extends about 30 to 50 astronomical units from the Sun. Among the best-known KBOs are the dwarf planets Pluto, Haumea, Makimaki, and Eris. These objects consist mainly of frozen materials such as water, ammonia, and methane, and vary greatly in size, from small, misshapen chunks of rock to large dwarf planets. There are theories that suggest that KBOs themselves could be responsible for the orbital anomalies observed in the outer solar system. These theories do not require a hypothetical ninth planet, they are based on the idea that the gravitational influences of the many KBOs, especially the more massive ones such as Pluto and Eris, could together be sufficient to explain the unusual orbits of the trans-Neptunian objects. Computer simulations and mathematical models have shown that the collective gravity of these KBOs may have enough force to influence the orbits of the smaller TNOs and cause the observed clustering and anomalies. Click subscribe now and look forward to many new exciting videos.